So when I was studying for step one, I hated the fact that I really didn't have any idea of how much time per day I should spend studying and ultimately how many hours does it really take to get a good score on this test. So this presentation is primarily made to give you guys an insight into, first of all, how much time I spent studying cumulatively for step one, and two, um, what is a study schedule supposed to be like? How many hours a day are you supposed to be studying? Um, this is all going to be data that I'm going to show you because I kept a um, religious track of my data and how much I was studying. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just give you an overview. My study timeline was that um, December 2019 of last year was when I finished my hospital uh, rotations. At that point, I had to transition into studying for step one. However, I do want you to know that no one just goes into studying for step one cold. You have to start reviewing for step one even before your dedicated period, primarily because <laughs> it's a lot of stuff you got to know. So I started reviewing step one stuff in around November. I kept track of all of the hours that I spent studying for step one using a forest app, which is just an app for time management. So that's where I'm going to show you in the next few slides. My official dedicated period, the dedicated period is defined by time that is spent specifically and purely to USMLE step one studying. In the dedicated period, usually the school that you're at will give you no other obligations and they'll say, you're free to do literally nothing else but study for this test. So use this time however you please, but you have no obligations um, to your medical school. And so for my uh, dedicated period, it lasted from January 12th. 2020 to 29th February 2020. My test date was on March 5th, so that's when I took the test. And so I'm going to go over each of my weeks. I'm going to show you how much I studied, and then at the very end of this presentation, I'm going to give you what worked for me, what didn't work for me, and then I'm also going to end with some takeaways about you know what you can do to optimize your studying and what's normal, what's not normal. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So in November of 2019, this graph right here shows you that the total number of hours I spent working in November the whole month was about 33 dedicated to USMLE Step 1. And you know these are the week breakdowns. So you'll see in one week I did about 13 hours, then I did about 7, and then I did about 12. Um, and again, as I told you, in November, I was still in the hospital. And so I was still in the hospital for about 8 to 10 hours a day. And I'd come home, and if I wasn't too exhausted, I'd study a little bit, the most I could. But you'll see that I was already kind of getting into the groove. Then in December, um, you'll see that the to all of December total, I did about 108 hours, right? Uh, the first week of December, you'll see in each week in December, I actually upped the amount of time that I was studying. And again, I was still in the hospital right now because I was in my clerkships, but I still up the amount I was studying, primarily because I'm a type of person who wants to, you know, gradually lean into studying. I can't just go cold turkey, no studying at all, to 12 hours a day. I know a lot of my classmates can, but I couldn't. But you'll see first week of December, 16 hours. Second week of December, about 17. Third week, 19. And fourth week, 31. I was finally ramping up. I was getting into my groove, right? Um, but you'll notice that this is still not in my dedicated, and this is still, you know, I'm technically... Um, on vacation, I'm just finishing clerkships, but at the same time, when you're studying for step one and you're getting into the zone where you're supposed to start studying, there's never really a vacation. You should kind of always have at least a little bit of studying going. Now, here's the big one, January 2020. So my dedicated period started about January 12th. So this is where my dedicated period started. But as I mentioned earlier, December 20th, the first two weeks of January, I was still studying. And that too, I ramped up quite a bit. Um, and the only reason I didn't ramp up as much as I wanted to is because I still wanted to celebrate Christmas, which I did. I still wanted to enjoy New Year's, which I did. I still wanted to hang out with my family for those first two weeks of January quite a bit, which I did. But you'll see that in the first week of January, I did about 56 hours. Then I went to 65, 70, 71, so 75. By the end of January, which is about three weeks into my dedicated period, I was at about 10.5 hours a day of studying. Okay, And I want you to see how I ramped up. In November, I was doing maybe three to five hours a day. <laughs> and then by January, midway through my dedicated, I was up to 10 and a half. And that's exactly strategically how I wanted to do it. Because I did not want to feel like, oh my god, this is horrible. Right? Imagine how you would feel if you had to study from zero hours a day suddenly to 10 and a half. You'd be like, this is the worst. Okay, and now the next thing is February. So now notice in February, I actually ended up having fewer hours than I did in January. Part of that is actually the function that January I had five weeks, but I also want to point out that in February, I did start to burn out a little bit. So you'll see first week of February, I had 73 hours. In the last week of January, I actually had 75. So I already had a dip, 
right? And then I went to 70, and then I went to 73, and then I went back down to 70. So I actually did start feeling a little bit burnt out. I felt like the most I could do in a day was about 10 and a half hours to 11, even though um, I just felt like you could do more than that. But for me, I was trying to go to the gym every day. I was still trying to, you know, eat lunch with my family, eat dinner with my family. So now note that in February, I had fewer hours, but you also see that I still kept hitting about 10 and a half hours a day, 10 hours a day. Um, and so 73, 70, 73, 70. And so going into my test on March, um, I ended up having my last three days end up doing 10 hours, 10 hours, eight hours. And then on, on the fifth is when I had my test. So that's blank. Um, and so this overall hopefully now gives you an idea. But if you want to add all of this up, how many hours did I actually study? Total from November to the March 5th was 791 hours. If you divide 791 by 24, you actually get 32 days nonstop. So imagine studying 32 days without sleeping in a row, and that's ultimately how much I ended up studying. Um, it may be different for you, it may be less, it may be more, entirely depends. If you now want to break it up by January and February and the average I did per week, you'll see that the average in February was higher per week, and that's because I was consistent. Um, and in the January, my average was lower, but that's because I took the first two weeks of January as not as intense. But I wanted to point out that my peak week was the fourth week. So I actually did increase productivity, increase productivity, increase productivity, and then started going down a little bit, right? And so what are the key takeaways that I can take from this? Well, one thing was I love the fact that I ramped up. I recommend you guys try to do the same thing if you are in your dedicated. Try to maybe do six hours a day. Maybe it's not even your dedicated. Maybe do two, two to three hours a day. Ramp up, ramp up, ramp up. And then when you start your dedicated, start with maybe eight to eight and a half hours a day then go to nine, maybe the next week, maybe then go to 10. And then once you hit 10, for me, that was personally my peak. I could not do more than like 10 and a half hours, almost 11 hours a day. It was too hard. But um, I went up and then I came down and I didn't do that on purpose. I just came down. So that was actually part of the fact that I ended up getting burnt out a little bit. Like I was just so done with studying. I was done with getting questions wrong. I was done with feeling like I didn't know anything. I was done with everything. And when you're hitting those points, that's when you really have to make sure you know your timings, right? So I would recommend that early on, give yourself space, give yourself the okay to feel like you don't know enough, Give yourself the okay to relax. Give yourself the okay to be fine with only doing eight hours a day because that relaxation time will not be allowed once you're like knee deep in your dedicated period. That knee, that relaxation time early on will be pivotal because it will give you the freedom to be like, okay, it's okay. And then once your peak time comes, you'll be like, now is the time to grind. So be okay with giving yourself space early. And then the moment the grind time comes, which for me should have been mid of February, I was already burnt out by that point, but I encourage you all to maybe, you know, taper it off a little bit in January and maybe then try to use that energy to put it into um, February or the knee deep um, weeks when you really want to get stuff done. I will also say that my last two weeks personally were very brutal. Like they were just tough for me to keep the going. It was tough for me to not get humiliated whenever I did badly on a U world section. And the worst feeling, and this happened to me so many times, was like one week away from my test and I get a UR block and I just see that I did shit, right? And that's like the worst feeling to have because you're taking the test soon. Um, all of this to say, this is how much I studied for step one. It ended up being about 10 and a half hours a day during my dedicated. Before that, I was doing seven and a half to eight and a half hours. So I recommend that. If you guys want to see my study schedule, I have a video on that right up here. Uh, but thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think about this, if you have any other questions, and I'm more than happy to answer them. Thanks for watching. Peace.